What's up guys, welcome back. Today I wanna to talk about something very, very exciting. It's all about value, finding value in tickets. And what better way to find value than with a game show? So stay tuned because something exciting is just about to happen. Hello everyone and welcome back to the first edition of How Much Is It Worth? Woo, so exciting. On this game show, this is the game show all about trying to guess how much these tickets are worth. Today we have a nice pair of tickets to see the Auto Senators versus the Philadelphia Flyers on Saturday, December 21st. As you can see, they're located in section 318, row E, seats one and two. Now, and the only rules of this game are, they have to remember, the rules we follow are the price is right rule. TPIR rules. That means if you go over the bid, you lose. You gotta get it under or exact. And now the question of the day is, How much is it worth? Contestant number one. How much is it worth? Here are the tickets in hand. Seats are located in section 318, row E, seats one and two on the aisle. These seats are located in the corner section of the upper bowl, not in the middle, not in the ends, they're in the corner. Now, how much is it worth? Mm, it seems like Philadelphia Flyers is probably a bronze level game. Okay. Bob. I'm gonna go for 24.50, Bob. Okay. Now, remember, this is for the pair of tickets, not for one ticket. Okay, I'm gonna go for $48, $49, Bob. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, contestant number two, contestant number two, same question. How much is it worth? One dollar. One dollar, oh my God. Cheater. TPIR rules, TPIR rules. We are, have ourselves a winner, ding, ding, ding. Who is it gonna be? Actual retail value. $50 each, $100 total, we have a winner. Congratulations, you've won tickets on How Much Is It Worth? Yes! Number one, number one, number one! Thank you once again to my two very lovely contestants for participating in my very first edition of How Much Is It Worth? This is gonna become a recurring segment on this channel. So definitely stay tuned for more episodes of this game show. They'll be sporadically placed in different videos, so make sure you're checking them all. But now, what I really wanna dive into today is all about finding value. So with value, what does that mean? It's basically trying to find the best price to pay for a ticket that's available either on the primary market or the secondary market. So what are the three things we're gonna cover? Face value, price breaks, and how to compare tickets between the primary and secondary markets. Well, let's begin. All right, so first off, face value. I think a lot of you already know what this is, but basically it's the price set by the box office for a specific ticket that's going on sale. Now, face values will include, you know, the actual ticket price, any kind of fees or taxes that need to be included. Uh, so what you'll get at the end of the day is, you know, a $35 ticket plus all the different fees and taxes, and you'll end up with, you know, your very expensive, expensive ticket. So if you buy a face value ticket, basically means you're buying from the box office direct, and that means that you're buying a ticket that is 100% authentic. And that's what a lot of people do like. So buying a base value ticket means you're always gonna be able to get into that event or game. Now, in a venue, they're not gonna price every single ticket the exact same price. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have different zones and sections and rows where you're gonna see different price points across the entire venue. So for example, with the auto senators, the cheapest seats you'll find in the entire building are up in the Coke zone, which is in sections 314 to 316. Uh, and that's where you're gonna find the best price for an actual ticket. And by best price, I mean just the cheapest price. Then as you kind of explore the rest of the venue, you know, there's the McDonald's zone, there's the upper bowl end zones and sidelines and you know, and then as you kind of work your way around the entire building, eventually you get all the way down to, you know, club seats and glass seats, all the great stuff available. Again, price points will not be the same across all these different sections because each section has its own value proposition associated to it. And so with that, you're gonna get a different type of buyer for each type of section or zone in the building. But that doesn't mean you can't find some additional value within these sections that you're actually looking for. Now, the last thing with face value tickets is that the price may still change. It's not always hard and set in stone in the past. That's what it used to be. But now box office and venues, they're all looking to squeeze out every single penny possible. And so when the demand is higher or lower, ticket prices may change up or down. Capiche? Excellent. Now, as I might have alluded to with this first section, we're gonna now move into price breaks. So what are price breaks? Basically, it's when you get to an actual section in the event or the venue where the price changes from one row to the next or one from one section to the next. With the auto center specifically, if you take a look in sections, you know, 318, 319 and these, you know, upper corner sections, what you're gonna find is that anything row E and up, that's one price point, and anything D and lower is actually a second price point. So if you're looking to maximize your value on every ticket you buy, it means you will be buying in actually the row E. Again, if you buy in row E, it's the same price as buying in row S. 
So in that entire section of tickets and then all those rows, it's basically saying, hey, the same price is being applied across the board. So why would you ever sit at the top when you can take a look, try and find some seats that are actually a bit lower for the same price point? And that is where you're gonna start finding some value. Same thing applies for concerts and other venues. What you'll see is that a lot of sections, you know, directly to the very back of the building, there'll be, you know, one price point. Uh, and then as you kind of move around the rest of the building, uh, you'll see that eventually there'll be a section where the price will go, you know, it'll jump from one price point to another. So if you're able to get yourself situated in one of those sections, you'll be closer to the band or closer to the artist, um, but basically paying potentially a lot less than what someone is paying for one section beside you. So if you're on the aisle of one section, on the aisle of the other section, and the price point jumps, you know, 50 bucks, then there you go, you're saving 50 bucks for basically the same view, same seat, same experience. So that's how you can find a lot of savings and value. Now it's important to remember that looking for this type of value only applies to face value tickets that are basically sold directly from the box office. The reason behind that is because the box office is setting entire blocks of tickets all at the same price. So what you're gonna see is that, you know, within a certain section, you know, say it's even for auto senators, if you're looking in section 318, entire section from, you know, row S, to row E is the same price, you're not gonna find that on the secondary market. Because when you think about it, why would I pay the same price in row S as I could in row E? You wouldn't. The only reason you would do that is if there were no face value tickets left, but at the same time, it's like, does that really make much sense? No, not really. But, but if you do want to attend that event and that's all that's available, then obviously you got to go with what's there. However, if you have the ability to select where you're going to be sitting and there are quite a few options available to you, definitely make sure you take some time to look for where the best seats are in a specific section. Taking a look and finding those price breaks is key to making sure you get the best value possible when buying those tickets. Now, last thing, when we're comparing tickets between the primary and secondary market. When you're buying on the primary market, like I said, prices are the same for entire blocks of tickets, so you're gonna find value by finding that price break. But when you're looking on the secondary market, that's where you actually now start seeing incremental differences between you know sections and rows and you know seating locations, and you'll be seeing it very, very specifically. So for example, if you're looking for a ticket, you're obviously not gonna pay the same price in row S as you would in row E. If you wanna be closer to the action, you actually wanna be sitting as low as possible, and so you're gonna be looking for those row E type seats. But again, Again, you don't want to be paying an arm and a leg for that same ticket. So, what's the play here? Hmm, well, let me tell you. First off, start with the box office. That's always going to be your number one go-to where to begin your entire search. The reason behind that is you need to get an idea of what the actual ticket price, the set ticket price, basically the face value of that ticket is. That'll kind of judge and help you determine whether you're getting a good deal or not. Also, with the box office, you can get an idea of how many tickets are still available. If there are quite a few seats available from the box office, it basically means the demand for that event is not yet there. And that's kind of your starting point. So for example, if you take a look at you know, the December 21st game, you'll see the ticket prices started at $35. Um, for the for, you know, third section 318, you know, section rows E to the S, they're starting at $35. But if you jump over to somewhere like StubHub or TickPick, what you're gonna see is that the actual prices for those events are much, much lower. Just because it's a weekend game doesn't always mean that it's gonna be an expensive game, especially when there isn't a lot of people looking to go see the auto senators. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna see that the ticket prices are much lower on the secondary market than what they would be on the primary market. So once you know what the price is on the primary market for the face value, go ahead, take a look on the secondary market. Ticketmaster does have their own, you know, Ticketmaster Plus, you know, integrated Rated resale market into the um, into their their maps, um, but you can also go ahead and check on stuff up and others. And what you'll see is that the tickets in this case much cheaper. So now you know what you're willing to pay. So if you're willing to pay for a face value ticket, um, that can kind of be your starting price point. So if, for example, you're willing to pay $35 plus any associated fees for those tickets, uh, you could set your price point on, you know, a StubHub or some other website and just move the slider so that you set it up so that you're only going to pay that same $41 or $35 or whatever it is, and then just kind of work your way there. What you'll see is that different sections of the map will obviously get cordoned off for you and you won't be able to buy tickets there because it won't meet that price point request, but you're going to see that there are a lot of other options that do exist. So it could end up being that you're still gonna buy it from the box office directly. Other times it could be you're gonna buy it from a secondary market, but make sure that you're always taking the time to compare the price between what you're getting at the box office to what you're gonna get on the secondary market. 
Now, on the secondary market, because the lower the row you get, generally speaking, the more expensive the price will get, you have to keep in mind that sometimes people will have bought those tickets from the box office to actually resell. So what you'll see is that the seats in row E, while they may only be $35 from the box office, you might actually find that they're, you know, 35, 40, $45, maybe even more on the resale market. So again, because these price breaks do exist, so what you're gonna see is that the prices for those better seats within that price break section, uh, you're gonna see that those are generally gonna be more expensive. Doesn't mean you can't find them, just have to make sure you take some time to actually look. Last thing to do with comparing price points is that you need to always be aware of how soon the event is actually going to happen. If the event is coming up very soon, as in, you know, in the next 24, 48, 72 hours, that's generally where you're gonna see the cheapest prices on the secondary market available. So prices at that point, people who have tickets available to sell, they're gonna start getting a bit more worried. They don't wanna to have to get stuck with tickets that they can't sell, basically lose their entire you know, investment. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna start seeing prices starting to come down slowly, slowly, slowly. When you get in that 24 hour period, that's generally where you're gonna see the best prices possible. So if you have the ability to wait, definitely wait. Go ahead, take your time, wait for prices to come down, then go ahead and start comparing between face value and secondary market pricing. At the end of the day, you obviously want to save as much money as possible, but at the same time, you don't want to be stuck with the risk of not getting anything because that has definitely happened to me before where I'm you know, right outside the venue waiting to go in and then the tickets just, the prices never come to where I want them to and so you're stuck or you're forced basically to buy what you don't want to buy. However, you wanna make sure that you get the tickets you want. So at the end of the day, make sure you start with checking out the face value prices. Two, take a look and see how much they're going for on the secondary market, those same equivalent type of seats. And then three, make sure that you make the right decision by taking the time to make your final purchase. So like what happened with me in Phoenix when I was trying to buy tickets out there, I ended up waiting. I got a bit lucky just because they had different promos and discounts going on. But if I had to buy it on the secondary market, prices had started to jump quite considerably as we neared the event. So if I had actually waited, I wouldn't have gotten great seats. I would have paid two or three times more money and the experience just wouldn't have been the same. So every event is different, every venue is different, every city is different. So at the end of the day, you really need to make sure that you're paying attention to, you know, what the face value is, what the market value is, and how soon you are to that event. If you can, try and wait, but if it's not possible or you just need to get those tickets right this second, make sure you take some time to find the best value in tickets. Yes! So in your next ticket buying purchase, let me know what kind of prices you were looking at between face value and market value. Let me know if you saved any money. Let me know if you spent a ton of money. I wanna know all about your adventures because I love to see how you guys are doing with your ticket buying experience. With the new year coming to an end, it's important that we all take some time to make sure we're always in the best possible mindset for buying those tickets. And so when you find some value, make sure that you smash the like button. All right, that covers it all. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because I have a lot of great content coming up in the new year. And I'll see you guys next time. 2450, Alex. Alex? Who's Alex? Trebek? This is not, no, the wrong game. Bill, uh, what's his name? Drew Carey. Drew, no, what's the, Bob. Bob, Mark, Bob. I'm gonna go f sucker. <laughs> I'm the biggest Sans fan. I was wearing my pants already, but I'm all excited for entertainment. Yeah, well, I'm the biggest sports fan.